In the town of Berkeley, Massachusetts, there exists a rock that some claim is the missing link to pre-Columbus ancient explorers. Age-old carvings known as petroglyphs cover the surface of a 40-ton stone that was pulled out of the Taunton River back in 1963. The petroglyphs depict a wide range of geometric shapes, lines, and drawings of people. It's these carvings that have become the subject of a great debate. In fact, it's said that there's more than 200 theories that have been suggested over the years some more ridiculous than the next, but there are some that have become popular explanations. However, even with all the theories, we still have no idea who exactly etched the symbols and drawings that make up the great mystery of Dighton Rock. I visited the giant boulder housed inside a state park not too far from where they originally found it. A museum was built to offer information to anyone interested enough to stop by. Information that includes what has become the four accepted possible theories of the museum. And to their credit, they really don't have an agenda as far as to which theory they believe is the right one. Visitors are presented the information and left to decide for themselves. Now before we review the explanations, let's take a quick look at the early history of Dighton Rock. For years, the rock sat in the banks of the Taunton River, where it was protected from vandals on the tide and also on the ice during the winter time. Speculation about its origins date all the way back to 1680 when Reverend John Danforth produced an early drawing of the petroglyphs that still exist today in the British Museum. Danforth's sketch is the earliest existing record of Dighton Rock, telling us that the petroglyphs at least predate 1680. But how far back do they go? One theory suggests as far back as the days of the Vikings. In 1837, a Danish scholar proposed a Norse origin. As recently as 1960, substantial evidence was found in the meadows of Newfoundland that proves that Vikings made it to North America some 500 years before Columbus did. So is it possible they made their way down to the coast of New England, or perhaps a ship got off track and settled in Massachusetts for a short time? Well, there's certainly no evidence to suggest that. Archaeologists know Vikings landed in Newfoundland, Canada because of several Norse Viking pieces and Clare Icelandic style house foundations left behind in the settlement, none of which have been found near Dighton Rock or anywhere else in the New World for that matter. It should also be noted that the scholar who proposed the theory never actually visited Dighton Rock in person, and also that he changed the original drawing he received and added the letters F-I-N-S to form the word Orphans which he took to be the name of a Viking leader, Thorfinn Karlsefni. Another theory came in 1781 from a French scholar who claimed Phoenician origin and that the carvings actually depicted three unmistakable scenes, one representing a past, another a present, and a third a future event. However, there's even less proof in the Viking theory, and it comes from another person that never actually visited the rock. We're not offered as much as a Phoenician symbol found, just an interpretation of the story. 1918 brought us the Portuguese theory. Professor Edmund Delaware was able to decipher the name of a Portuguese captain, Miguel Cortoril, as well as the year of 1511. Miguel was a Portuguese sailor that took a trip to North America in 1502 to find his lost brother who vanished on his own voyage a year earlier. Both brothers were never to be seen again. There's verifiable records that these two existed, but nothing on where their boats ended up if anywhere. Delaware's assertion was that at least Miguel was able to make it to the coast of Massachusetts and eventually to Dighton Rock to carve his name. Further evidence includes a standard triangle to be the coat of arms, an incomplete Portuguese cross, and somehow finding the name Miguel Cortorel in this chaos. Now I'm no epigraphist, somebody that would study these kinds of carvings, and this might not be the best picture, but I don't see it. Maybe I don't have the eyes for it, but I went ahead for fun and colored in the prominent carvings and came up with whatever this is. I'm willing to bet most people would come up with something completely different as well if you asked them what they saw inside of this picture. Especially when you consider everything else that you have to discount around it. We do however know the Native Americans were here, which leads us to the logical assumption and the final theory that maybe they're the ones responsible for the carvings on Dighton Rock. Southeastern Massachusetts was home to the Wampanoag tribe. Admittedly, they're not known for leaving petroglyphs, which in fact are really only popular in the southwestern part of the U.S. But even though rare, it's still possible because some were discovered in Vermont in a riverbed that have been accepted as Native American origin. Unfortunately for Dighton Rock, it has become a platform 
used for anyone pushing an ancient civilizations to America agenda. However, those theories never offer the real archaeological proof that solves these kinds of mysteries unequivocally. Is it possible that some Phoenicians or Vikings stopped by to tag a rock in Massachusetts and left no other trace of their time here? Possibly, but at minimum, it's a huge stretch. So I say, why not the Native Americans? We can prove that they were here, and certainly that they had the tools to do so. As for the meaning of the inscription, that we don't know. Reverend Danforth, who first proposed the Native American theory, believed the inscriptions depict a story about foreign men who came up the river to fight the Indians. It's since been proven that his drawings weren't very accurate in terms of what's actually on the rock. He may have been wrong in the long shot of determining the meaning of the inscriptions, but in my opinion, he had the right idea in assuming Native American people like the Wampanoag are probably responsible. With a genuine mystery, you're ultimately left to decide for yourself, and that's what you get with Titan Rock. Whatever this is, we can all agree it's a moment, or perhaps several moments, frozen in time. That in itself is an intriguing mystery and proof that maybe we can someday do something ourselves that can live on years after all of us and create wonder for generations to come.